Hello everyone, my name is Adi Dharma and I just have this and I explaining to you how I went to Allah. We soon walked into Sukarno Hatta and this was the view. We then met up with our tour group, but my sister was hungry so we had to go to a restaurant and although I didn't want to go there, the view was worth it for the video. <laughs> we were soon walking to Terminal 3, Gate 2. After I prayed for Maghrib, my dad all paid that we had to go to the gate so we can catch the flight. Right now it's about 7 p.m. and we're rushing to the gate so we can board the plane. I'm gonna be honest, at first I really 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 wanted to go on a plane for the first time in 6 years. I was extremely excited but after Umrah, this was the seat that I got on the plane. You can see in front, that is my cousin's dad, and right beside me is my sister. <laughs> I woke up pretty early in the morning, and almost everyone was still asleep. And a few hours later, we're about to land. We're probably gonna be waiting for six hours for the plane to go to Turkey. And then we're gonna be returning back to Jeddah. We're going to Turkey because uh, there's transit or whatever. I don't really get it, but yeah, we have to go to Turkey, Istanbul. We're gonna be returning to Jeddah in a bit. We're finally gonna head to Turkey. This time the flight only takes four hours instead of the grueling ten hours that we had to go from Jakarta. This is the plane that we entered and it is much smaller than the one we used to get to Jeddah. We finally made it to Istanbul. After we arrived in the Turkish Istanbul airport, I was pretty exhausted from the flight and my family wanted to walk around and see what stuff they can buy, but I really was just extremely exhausted by that point. Walking just made it even worse and I was really just not in the mood to buy stuff at the moment. While waiting, I got a beautiful view of the planes outside. I didn't film the takeoff or landing, so this is just a video of me filming in the airport.
We still found our third god and we followed him to the bus later. Anyways, we soon rode on the four hour journey from Jeddah to Madinah and soon found our hotel. This is our hotel room. We soon entered into Al Nabawi, and also this is the area surrounding the hotel. And for anyone who has gone Umrah, this place might be familiar. And fun fact: by praying here, you'll get approximately at least 1,000 times better rewards. And this place can also hold at least 500,000 people. After that, we went around the whole Al Nabawi Masjid and we went to places such as Masjid Gamama, Masjid Ali, and Masjid Abu Bakar. This is Al Gamama and it is the only one that I filmed. We soon went to Rauda, which is mourning the death of Rasulullah, Abu Bakar, and Muhammad. You can see where their bodies are kept in these pictures. We're starting off day 4 by going to Jabal Uhud near Martina. And we're only gonna be visiting the outskirts of it. And the place we're gonna be visiting is Aruma, which is the hill that played a significant role in the Uhud War and the graveyard where some of the people who died in the Uhud War bodies are located. This is the Jabal Uhud behind us. And this is the Aruma behind us. Unfortunately, I failed and cannot find the photo for the one with the cemetery behind us. So here is a picture of the cemetery. The next place we went to is a Kurma Plaza. It's these weird palm tree shaped trees and I mistaken them as palm trees when I first saw them. So we were told to pick any candy from the and I got this batch. This shows some random candy in here. And I tasted some of them but most of them no. I hope you guys like them. Yeah. While going home, I saw some masjid that were at least 1,000 years old. So before we get to Makkah in Madina, I was told to use this ihram outfit and it's two pieces of cloth wrapped around your body they both have a name the top half is Izar and the bottom half is Rida of course there are a few rules when you're about to go Umrah and there's a lot of them so I'm just gonna mention you which one that bother me the most you cannot use shampoo or soap or anything that smells too good so like perfume or deodorant you cannot clip your own nails after ihram and this is especially a huge problem for me because I like to unconsciously clip my own nails. I've mentioned this before but you have to wear the ihram outfit and this rule only applies for men. Alright, I know someone who can struggle real hard on this but swearing is forbidden while in ihram. Alright, now that the rules are done, let's finally go umrah. The tower that you're looking at is Zam Zam Tower. Anyways, we should approach Il Haram, which is the masjid that's centered around the Kaaba, and just look at the site. And as you can see, it is just extremely crowded. 
Also, a quick Google search told me that this place can hold about 5 million people, but I just did not believe that because just how small this place is when I came there. We should perform Tawaf, which is the action of circling around the Kaaba seven times, and I unfortunately couldn't record, so my cousin's dad decided to record, and here's a few videos of it. Oh, and you might think that, wow, that's a crowded place. Well, although you might be right, this is pretty much normal crowdedness, I guess. The place can really get any less crowded than this, except if the entrances are closed, of course. But this is as least crowded as you can get. These are our tour group pictures. I then soon recorded another video while it was morning so I got proof that I actually went there and I have video footage. This is a few days after Umrah but I put it here so well it because it has something to do with Umrah. So this is the Kaaba right behind me right there. You see that yeah that's the Kaaba and um, I guess you can see it I During the Tawaf, we soon did the Sai, which is doing a small run seven times in a row. And you can imagine that after doing Tawaf, I was extremely exhausted, and doing Sai made me more exhausted. We didn't really do much on day six except Salat Jumat. So here's the view of Salat Jumat from all of the room, and we actually got a pretty good view. Yeah, you can just see how crowded it was in South Jamaat and luckily me and my dad got a spot in the masjid but at this point I'm half convinced that half of the capacity of our haram is in the sidewalks and the road. On day 7, we're gonna be going to Jabal Nur and don't get confused by Jabal Uhud. Jabal Nur is a completely different mountain. We went to the museum and we saw the first ever or I guess the copy of the first Quran ever made. The real one is in Turkey. I'm currently standing beside the place where the first revelation or Wahyu was given. Um, this is called Gunung Jabal Nur. And it's that place right there. Where's the The first revelation or the first wahyu was given to Nabi Muhammad and this was the first signs of Islam in history, which happened right here. So something interesting happened after we filmed the Gunung Jabal Nur video, which is that we left our phone in a perfume store, while well, my sister left it there so it's definitely not my fault. All that matters is that I almost lost all the footage, all the documentation. This project could have been nothing if I lost my phone. And thankfully, we contacted the owner of the perfume store and they said that they found it and they offered to give, give it to us straight into our hotel but we just retrieved it ourselves. And I don't know if you realize but women in Saudi Arabia, they consistently wear black. Now, this is a part of their culture and tradition and it's mainly caused by the reason that they're not allowed to attract men so they wear mostly black outfit and one more thing is that they wear these black face masks these are called makeup or chadar it's not really mandatory for women to wear this but this is part of the culture i guess in the second to final day we went to the museum of Al Modi or Abu Bakar Museum. 
and it is probably the most hilarious and amusing museum I've ever went to and the most fun I've ever had in Saudi Arabia.